Hi everyone, welcome to a video all about packing in a personal item for two weeks. Yes, you heard me right, two full weeks. And I'm going to be showing you what I pack and how I pack as a minimalist. Now you need to ask yourself four very important questions before you even start thinking about packing. Number one, where are you going? Like what's the actual location and what's the weather like there? Number two, what are your accommodations like? Are you staying with the family and friend? Are you going to a hotel? Are you backpacking somewhere? Number three, what are you actually gonna be doing on this vacation? What sort of events are you going to, if any? And number four, how long are you actually going to be traveling for? And just for context throughout this video, I am going to Florida. I am staying with my in-laws at their condo. It is primarily a beach vacation with my family. And like I mentioned, I am going for two weeks. So I will keep those answers to my questions in mind throughout packing. And without further ado, let's finally get into step one of my actual packing routine. And that is to pull out what you are packing in. For me, it is a Lululemon black backpack. We are traveling by air and this is the perfect size for a personal item. And at the end of the video, once I've gathered everything that I'm packing, I'm going to show you how I actually pack in this personal item. Okay, so we have our frame of reference, what we are packing in. Step number two, now is to pack category by category. And what I figured out is I actually go room by room or space by space in my home when I go to pack. And then within that room or space, I will pack the bulkiest things first and work my way down to the least bulky. So let's head first to the most fun place to start packing. And in my opinion, that is the closet. And the first biggest bulkiest subcategory of the closet is clothing, outerwear, and shoes. My favorite thing to wear in general, and especially to a beach vacation is dresses. I have four selected here. Now I don't have high hopes that all four are going to fit, but this leads me to my first tip, which is have a maybe pile. And I think one or two of these dresses, probably the brighter color ones that aren't as versatile, will head to my maybe pile, which just means if there's space, I can pack it. And next up, let's talk about my matching sets. First up, I have a lounge set with shorts and a shirt. Of course, I'll just wear them to lounge around, but they'll also double as pajamas. And then I also have this like casual brown set with some wide leg pants and a button up shirt. And finally for clothing, tops and bottoms, let's go over my tops first. Unfortunately, I am going to have to take a sweater. It's tough because it's such a bulky item, but I know I'm gonna need one. It gets a little chilly at night in Florida. So this one is just a cropped cream color sweater with some billowing sleeves and it's fairly dressy so I can pair it with a lot of things again and dress an outfit up. And then also for tops, I selected one t-shirt and I selected a sleeveless top in different colors. And then for bottoms, I just chose one in dark and one in light. I have a more everyday bottom here from Lululemon, just a little pair of shorts. And then I also have these dressier shorts from Babaton. And the vast majority of time, I can get away with a short in Florida, but if I do need a pant option, again, I have those brown pants from that set. So that is it for my clothing. Again, we have a few dresses in purgatory. Not sure if those are going to fit, but something that I wanted to talk about in general with clothing is all these things go together. I can mix and match quite literally anything from the pile of clothing that I have here in front of me, and that is a really good tip when you are traveling. So I would consider whether these items work well together proportionally and whether all of the colors and the tones are cohesive. Another thing that I ensure with my clothing is that it can span the, you know, events that we are going to. So I am going to everything from, you know, just chilling on the beach with my family to maybe some fancier dinners, maybe a date night with my husband. And the clothing that I have selected absolutely can take me to either of those events and everything in between. So clothing's done. Now let's talk about outerwear. I have this little packable rain jacket. I say that I take this everywhere with me. I don't know if I'm going to have space this time. Plus, keeping the answers to my question in mind, I know that I'm going to my in-laws. I'm sure they will have extra rain jackets. So this is again an item that I am putting in the maybe pile. I am keeping with those like colorful dresses and we will just see if it fits. And now let's talk about shoes. I'm only going to be taking one pair of sandals. These ones right here, they're like the Birkenstock Eva dupe. And I 
find they're really good for a lot of events. Now, would I go to a very formal occasion with these, like a wedding? No, absolutely not. And would these even be my preference for a nice date night with my husband? No, but I don't have the luxury of space this time. I can really only go with one shoe. And these are the most versatile that I do have in my collection. And talking about my shoes, it actually ties in nicely to my next tip, which is take out your plain outfit. Now that I have seen everything that I have to pack, I'm going to pull out everything that I am wearing on the plane, shoes included, and make sure that they are my bulkiest items. So for me, that is the brown pan set and long sleeve shirt, that button up shirt and this sweater and of course my shoes too and if i get <laughs> if i get fairly desperate and i really want to take a colorful dress with me i might actually try to put on this shirt as well underneath that brown button up so I am taking quite a hefty amount of what I would be packing and putting it on my person for the plane. Oh, and I forgot to mention a very important part of this subcategory, and that is actually undergarments and bathing suits. And of course, I'm not gonna be showing this stuff on camera, but suffice it to say, I'm taking the absolute bare minimum. Other than bathing suits, like I said, I am heading to a beach for two weeks, so I'm actually taking all the bathing suits that I own, which is a total of three. And the only like tip I have, I guess, when it comes to undergarments is I would stick to nude because nude can go under black or light colors so for me that's just like the most versatile piece and it prevents me from taking like two bras for instance so that's my undergarments and my bathing suits all packed up and quite frankly I will also take out the undergarments that I am going to be wearing on the plane and setting those aside with my little plane pile just to ensure that I am not packing one more thing than I need to be. And when it comes to smaller items like bathing suits or undergarments, I try to make sure that they're all corralled in one spot. So I actually just use this little NYX bag. It's like a nice mesh bag. And I just put every one of my bathing suits and undergarments in here so they can stay in the same spot during travel and they're not flying out all over the place in my backpack. Okay, and finally moving on to the next subcategory within the closet, and we are talking all things bags, wallets, jewelry, and accessories. All right, let's chat first about bags and wallets. Of course, I have my Lululemon backpack, which I will fully unpack when I get to my destination and I will actually use on something like a day trip if I need to. But then the other bag that I want to bring is this Lululemon fanny pack. I think the cool kids call it a belt bag. <laughs> but I'm a millennial, so I call it a fanny pack. But any in, I love this bag. It is just such a great one to have on the go. I think I would use it a lot during this trip, but this is a maybe item if we're tight on space because I don't know if it's absolutely necessary if I have my backpack. And then the next biggest bulkiest thing is my wallet, which I 100% will be packing, but I want to do a little bit of a cleanup first. I have a ton, like a ton of change in here. There's just makes no sense to be bringing this change in a currency that we are not going to be using. Plus I want to ensure that I have a bit of the currency like USD in my wallet instead of peso. So I'm going to take out the currencies that we don't need, take out the cards that I am not going to be using, take out all of that big bulky change and just make sure that my wallet is as streamlined as possible for this two week vacation. And next up kind of outliers when it comes to bags. I have this foldable bag that I always find handy when traveling. And then this little laundry bag that comes within my Lululemon bag. I just use it as a laundry bag and I find this very handy as well. So those are just two extras in the bag category. Sorry, mom life, my little angel woke up. So I just have a few other things to talk about quickly. Yes, don't we? We do. Okay, so the next thing is accessories. So sunglasses are the only accessory I'm going to need on a beach vacation, so that is what I'm going to be bringing. And then, oddly enough, I'm actually going to bring my jewelry, I think. I don't typically bring a lot of jewelry, but I think it's going to be fun this vacation. And it's just such a tiny little container here. You want to play with that, buddy? It's just such a tiny container that I don't really mind bringing it along. I've really streamlined my collection over the years. So yeah, I do think I'm going to bring my jewelry just to add a little bit of something something to these outfits where it doesn't cost me a lot of space. All right, so that is actually it for that entire 
entire area of my home, the closet. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice jewelry day. So it's time for playtime, but in magical YouTube land, I'm going to see you back here in one second and we will talk about everything that I am packing from the bathroom. It's nap number two for my little guy, so my hair is probably more unruly, my makeup's creasing, but let's press on and talk about what I would pack from the bathroom. So we're talking makeup, skincare, hair care, nail care, personal hygiene, medical, and anything else in that realm. And I'm going to be packing in these two bags, clear one for makeup and black one for all other items. So let's start first with makeup because that's the most fun. I am going to explain the products very quickly, but by and large, I'm taking an everyday look that can be elevated if necessary. And I am trying to eliminate powders because those are easy to break during travel and they're a little bit bulky and brushes because those two take up a lot of space. So for complexion, I'm taking a concealer and my powder. I'm not willing to compromise on my complexion powder. And for a cheek product, I'm bringing this cream that actually acts as a highlighter, a blush and a bronzer. It's that perfect in between shade with a little bit of shine. For my brows, I'm taking both a pencil and a brow mascara. For my eyes, I'm taking both a stick eyeliner and a mascara. And for my lips, this is a little excessive, but I am bringing two lip liners, which I use as lipsticks. And then I am also bringing a lip gloss. And then finally for makeup tools, I have two brushes that both correspond with my powder, one for all over the face and one for dealing with creasing around the eyes. All right, my friends, that is it for makeup. And you might notice what I have omitted being my blush, my bronzer and my highlight all in powders and their corresponding brushes just to try to condense it further. Plus I always find when I'm on vacation, I think I'm gonna wear a lot of makeup, but I never end up doing it. And the one that I actually will put on is this like blush bronzer hybrid kind of for my cheeks. That product takes like three seconds to put on so I will find the time for that as opposed to a more intricate look with a bunch of powders. All right next up is skincare and again we are packing into this black bag now. So first of all of course these are all under 100 mils. Everything is under 100 mils. I think that goes without saying if you are traveling by plane in a personal item or a carry-on. So in the first like 100 milliliter tube I have my cleanser. This is for my face and and body and that really helps to condense the amount of products that I am traveling with just having one thing for all over my body and then I have a basic moisturizer same thing this is for my face and body as well I'm also going to be taking my face sunscreen I'm sure that my in-laws will have something for the body we just don't have space for a body sunscreen so I will be taking my face one and then I'm also going to be taking this magic bomb it's essentially my lip chat but I also do use it on other areas of my face or body if they're particularly dry. And the last thing is only if I have space. I know it's small, but we are a tight fit for these two weeks. This is a treatment. If I was going for a few days, even a week, I wouldn't pack this, but because I am going for the two week duration, it's on the chopping block like it's a consideration so if i do have space i'll go ahead and pack this it'll be nice to have but if not my skin isn't going to like implode in two weeks without this product so i'm also fine if it needs to stay at home all right next up would be hair care and i only have one product that i might take this is again a treatment very similar to that skincare treatment i just showed you it's a leave-in like intense conditioner for my hair now this is where i want to come in with another tip for packing. So I only pack what I am not willing to compromise on. I am not willing to compromise on a lot of my skincare. If I use a different moisturizer, I can easily break out in hives. Like my skin is very delicate and sensitive. So I am going to pack the skincare that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. With my hair, I really don't care quite as much. It has a bit of flexibility. I do have fairly dry damaged hair, but it's not going to like snap off and break if I use a different shampoo and conditioner for two weeks. And again, keeping my questions in mind, I know the accommodations that we are going to. I know we are going to my in-laws. I know they're gonna have shampoo and conditioner. So I'm not gonna be taking up valuable space with like a travel size shampoo and conditioner, but I might bring this hair treatment if there is room. All right, my apologies for the noise outside. I hope it's not too bad, but again, we're on, you know, the baby schedule, not mine. So I'm just going to press on here. Let's chat next about hair tools and 
accessories. So I am not bringing any hair tools. I literally messaged my mother-in-law was like, hi, do you have something to do your hair? She was like, yeah, I got a blow dryer and a curler. I'm like, that's good enough. Because I know, I know even from my last packing video that I am not gonna have space for my Dysons. It's just not going to happen. So I am foregoing all hair tools. Plus my hair, you know what? Air dry is really nice. I'm quite lucky. I have very fine, flat, like super straight hair and it air dries okay. So I don't really need, you know, too, too many hair tools. And if I wanna put a little curl through it, I can borrow something from my mother-in-law. Now in the smaller hair tools realm, I am going to be taking a brush and a comb. I do like to have both, but again, if I am tight on room, I will only bring the hair brush. It is like the biggest necessity to me. And then for hair accessories, I'm going to be bringing the clip that is in my hair. I wear this like nine times out of 10 and a hair elastic as well. If we're really tight on space, I will forego the hair elastic and I will just go with the clip. And then three other tools related to hair. <laughs> We have hair removal. So we have my eyebrow pluckers, which for two weeks, I definitely want to have. Again, hair removal, razor, two weeks, I'm going to bring a razor. If it was anything less, literally anything less, I wouldn't take a razor, but especially being a beach vacation, I want to ensure that I have this on hand. And then this is just to do with my eyelash hairs. I like to lift them up every single morning. Actually, you know what, sometimes multiple times throughout the day, especially if I'm not wearing makeup, which I'm going to be at the beach a lot, not wearing makeup that is, I want to ensure that my eyelashes are lifted. It just makes me look like I've slept about three to four hours more than I actually have. So I love having these on hand. I do use them when I apply my makeup too, but I find more now it's part of like my morning routine. And if I notice them sagging a little bit, I will go in throughout the day and ensure that they are nice and lifted. All right. And for nail care, I just simply have my nail clippers and a nail file. Some people will not think that these are necessary to travel with. I am much the opposite. If I was going a weekend away somewhere, I would bring these two. And that is because if I have like a broken nail, I have to deal with that nail right away. I don't even like need to take care of all the nails. I just need to chop that one nail off and make sure it's filed. So I need to take these two with me anywhere for any length of time that I am traveling. All right, oral care next, which is pretty self-explanatory. Toothbrush with a little cap, toothpaste, and then flosser sticks, which I just put into this travel tub. And then the last thing going in that black bag is our medical supplies, which for us just include, you know, a few few just in case backup pills. Ah yes, and for skincare we also have the makeup eraser. This is what I use to remove my makeup. Now I rarely travel with the makeup eraser. I prefer the individually packaged makeup wipes. I, I never buy makeup wipes anymore except for travel and they have to be like the one pack, like individually packaged makeup wipes. But because I'm going for two weeks, I actually think that's pretty wasteful. Like it's a long enough time where it makes sense to bring this makeup eraser. If not, if I was only going for a few days, I find it way too much of a hassle to try to dry this out and wash it and it's just very complicated. But for the full two weeks, yeah, I'll absolutely take it as opposed to like 14 makeup wipes. Oh, and actually there is one more thing that I want to chat about. I also bring a backup Ziploc bag. I nearly forgot. And that is for two reasons. Number one, if I have any spills from these items, I can quickly contain it and deal with it further once I get to my destination. And number two, if I'm having any troubles with this clear bag at security at the airport, I can just instead pop all my liquids into this plastic bag. And speaking of security at the airport, another tip that I have is I take all all of my liquids from this black bag and all my makeup liquids too. And I will put them into this clear bag. I will take everything that is a solid and I will put it in the black bag. And that way I am ready to go once I get to the airport. And then when I arrive at my destination, I will sort everything out again. So I have my makeup in here and then all the rest in this black bag. All right, my friends, so that was it. We are done from the bathroom. Let's move on now to a whole different section of the house and that is my office. So we're talking all things tech, 
travel documents, and stationery. So the biggest, bulkiest item that I have to pack is my laptop. I would typically never take my laptop on travel, but I am going for two full weeks, which means I'm going to want to edit some YouTube videos. And that is the only function of this laptop. So I will be taking that. And then I also will be taking my cell phone, of course, and my AirPods, which I find very valuable for travel, especially on the plane. And because of all those techie items, I have to take some cords too. This is the cord to my laptop, and this is the cord to both my cell phone and my AirPods. Next up is travel documents. Because this is an international flight for me, I need to take my passport. I can't get away with any other form of identification. And just because I'm me, I'm going to pop this in my wallet immediately so I 100% confidently know where it is. And then next up, any printouts about pertinent travel information. I know we have our phones. I know we can just look things up, but what if my phone battery dies for some reason? I like to have my booking confirmation, my flight confirmation with all the details on something physical, like a piece of paper. So I will go through the hassle of printing a few documents out that I feel like I need. And then the last absolute necessity in this category is a pen. You always need a pen when traveling. You need to fill out documents no matter what, I swear. Every time I travel now, I'm filling out a document. And it's always something that I find that's easy to forget. So don't forget your pen next time you're traveling by air. And then the last up in this category is only if we have space. It's definitely one of those ones in purgatory and it is a tiny little notebook. I know theoretically I don't need this because I have a cell phone and even a laptop, but I love to actually write out video ideas for YouTube. And I find I'm very inspired when I travel and I have a lot of like good ideas or at least I think they're good for upcoming videos and I like to write them down. The notes app, it just, it can't, it can't do it for me. It just doesn't do it for me. So we will see if I have space for this, but I would love to bring this along with me. I would actually probably sacrifice some other things so that I could have this like creative little notebook along with me. So you may be thinking we're done, but oh no, there's one more stop in the house that we have to get to. And it is none other than the kitchen. And there are three things from the kitchen that I definitely want to bring along. Number one is gum. More important than anything else. Yes, more important than my water bottle is gum. I need gum when I'm on an airplane and just in general, I am a gum person. I like to have gum on hand at all times. So definitely a pack of gum is a must. Number two, some actual food. Yes, a little snack. I like to have a snack on the airplane. I have a lot of dietary restrictions, unfortunately, and I'm also breastfeeding. So I think it's, it's pretty necessary for me to have something hearty and calorically dense on the airplane just in case. Sometimes they're out of food now a lot. Anyways, so I am going to be bringing a large helping of some mixed nuts. That is my snack of choice on a plane. And then a little empty water bottle for travel. Yes, empty because I don't want to be like chugging it at security. So I will just take this along and fill it up once I'm past security. All right, my friends, we have gone through every area of the house that I need to gather things to pack for my two week vacation. But now I'm going to show you how I actually pack all that into my personal item. So before I start, with the main component, I want to take care of everything that has a designated space already, aka a pocket. So on this very bottom pocket that I find very easily accessible is going to be my wallet and of course my passport. I'm also going to have my booking confirmation and my pen. Moving up to the second pocket on the front, that is where I'm going to put my snacks and gum. And then on one of the side pockets is where I'm going to fit my water bottle. And then the third zipped pocket is where I'm going to be storing my extra Lululemon bag and my accessories. So my sunglasses, my jewelry, and that other foldable bag. On the very top pocket, I house my small electronics. So that includes my cell phone and my AirPods. And then there is the large pocket at the back where I store my laptop. Now moving inside the main compartment, there is still one more zippered portion and that's where I put my cords traveling. And although I have wound them up, sometimes they become unfurled and just really bother me. So I want those in their own separate pocket. So from there, we are now packing to the main component and all I'm going to do is put the non-breakable items that I likely will not need during travel down towards the bottom 
In this instance, it's primarily clothing, and I am going to roll my clothes up as absolutely small as humanly possible and push them down to the very bottom of my bag. And then I'm going to place the more delicate items on top, those being the ones from the bathroom. And again, those are items I might need to be more accessible on the plane. For instance, if my lips are feeling dry on the plane, I'm going to want to head in and pull out that all-purpose bomb. All right, my friends, well, that is it. We had to make some concessions and some cuts, but we have made it. We are stuffed to the brim, but we have made it packed into a personal item for two weeks. And the general theme here is to keep things as minimal as possible. That is like my life motto. I, I am a minimalist. I consider myself a minimalist at least. And I like to have curated collections. I don't like excess stuff. That's just for me personally. But I imagine this is going to, you know, be more applicable to other people that aren't just minimalists, to everyone that needs to pack tight. And to be honest, by air travel, like the only free thing now is a personal item. So everything else is going to come at a cost. And because of that, I do think people are packing less and less for their trips these days. That's just the impression that I get at least. So I hope this video was helpful either to see what I'm packing or not packing, or to see how I pack or a combination of the two. So it was a fun one to put together. I absolutely love packing. It is just like such a joy of mine. Do I like unpacking? No, not whatsoever, but actually packing so much fun. And of course, I hope you had fun following along with me. If you did happen to like this video, then feel free to give it a like. If you like me, if you like the content that I'm producing on this channel in general, then definitely consider subscribing. It would truly mean the world to me. All right, everyone, we'll just thank you so much for being here and I really hope to catch you on my next minimalism video. Bye for now, everyone. Bye.